everyone, welcome back to the Zeko Football Channel. The international break is finally over, which means that now we can turn our attention to the Premier League once more. Today we are diving into the Merseyside derby, Liverpool taking on Everton. If you're new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, and you turn on those notifications. Right, let's preview the Merseyside derby. To begin, let's have a look at the starting lineups. We're going to start with Liverpool as they are the side at home. I've got Liverpool set up in their 4 3 3 formation. We have Alisson in goal, Trent Alexander Arnold at right back, Kanate and Van Dyke as the centre back pairing. And then there's a major question mark. Andy Robertson suffered a dislocated shoulder while out on international duty for Scotland. Now, it's suspected that it should take some time to recover, but there is some surrounding optimism that he should have a chance to be fit for. For the game against Everton. If there is a chance, I expect him to play. If not, Simakas could easily come in and fill his role for one singular game. Alexis McAllister will fill that central defensive midfield role and just ahead of him, because of his suspension for Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott will be taking up that left attacking mid slot. Dominic Soberslight, of course, keeping his place. Left hand side, we have Luis Diaz, and on the right hand side, we have the ever present Mo Salah. Diogo Jota is currently out with suspension, and Cody Hakpo is a doubt with injury, which means that I've gone for Darwin Nunez up front. And this is your Liverpool side. And now let's turn our attentions to the visiting side, Everton. I've got Jordan Pickford in goal with Everton being in a 4-4-1-1. This is actually the same side that they played in their most recent match. The extremely impressive performance. Ashley Young out at right back. Tarkovsky and Branthwaite as the main centre-backs, and you've got Mikalenko at left-back. Onana and James Garner as the two main holding central midfield players with Decore just in front of them. Dwight Manil out on the left-hand side, and Jack Harrison following his screamer in their last game out on this right. And I've kept Dominic Calvert-Lewin as their main focal point and central striker. I can see Beto coming into the starting lineup. However, because of the amount of game time or the lack of game time that Calvert-Lewin has had, I fully expect him to stay and keep his place after his good performance for Everton in their last outing. And this is your Everton side. Now let's try to break down how the game will play out. Well, both sides have two very contrasting views on how football should be played. Because Liverpool are at home and because I believe they have the higher quality players, I think they're going to dominate possession. Trent Alexander-Arnold would be walking into midfield to partner Alexis McAllister in something of a double pivot. This means that you have a back three of Kanate, Van Dijk and Andy Robertson. Of course, if he plays, Simicast can fill this role as well. Harvey Elliott and Dominic Sabazlai will be pushed further ahead into boxes in in between the lines of Everton's team. This would allow them to pick up pockets of space they wouldn't naturally be able to because of the extra midfield presence from Trent Alexander-Arnold. Mo Salah and Luis Diaz are going to be holding out wide to try and edge out that space a little bit further. It's all about creating space in the middle of the park by keeping their width and staying on the outside. Darwin Nunes is going to be an absolute nightmare for the likes of James Tarkovsky and Branthwaite. On the other side, from a more defensive point of view, you've got Ashley Young and Mikulenko wanting to tuck in. I think Everton are going to want to be very compact, very defensively solid, and that's why Sean Dyche, I believe, will pick these three central midfielders. James Garner has had a very, very good run in the side. Onana is an ever-present in this side, especially with his ability to drive with the ball. And then you've got Decore, energy, pace, power, presence, everything you need from a general Sean Dyche player. The left-hand side in Dwight McNeil will be looking to double up and help out Mikalenko whenever he can against Mo Salah, and the vice versa, the same can happen for Harrison out on this right-hand side. That leaves Dominic Calvert-Lewin to have almost a lone role against the likes of Alexis McAllister, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. It's going to be a difficult and lonely role, but if he can get a couple of knockdowns due to his physicality, I think Everton are going to be able to break from that. But let's just rewind for a second, and let's go and talk about Liverpool. This is how I believe Liverpool will set up going forwards. I think they'll dominate possession and will want to really overwhelm the Everton side that are looking to be very, very compact. As you can see, I've got the back three here. They're going to play the balls into the midfield too. We're really going to be essentially dictating like a metronome, moving the ball over to these wide areas to Luis Diaz and to Mo Salah, who are going to be playing very quick one-twos between themselves and the two. 
two central attacking midfielders, Harvey Elliott playing the ball in and then moving into the box himself to try and pick up pockets of space on either side. The same can be said for Dominic Soboslai, who's going to be playing an absolutely crucial role in trying to dictate play from a more forward area. His positions and where he picks the ball up will not only dictate where the Everton players are, but also give a little bit more space to Mo Salah out on this right-hand side. As I've said, a good one-two is always going to beat a couple of players like Mikolenko and like Ashley Young, who is not necessarily the most switched on of players. When we can see that, and when they do hit the byline, they're going to be looking for cutbacks towards Darwin Nunes, or even floaters around to the back post, waiting for Luis Diaz and for Harvey Elliott to run into the box. This is going to be a crucial way to overwhelm Everton, and Jordan Pickford is going to need to do his very best to try and claim passes from the air as much as he possibly can. It's going to be a very, very suffocating game for Everton. The ball will be recycled over to Trent Alexander-Arnold once play reaches this right-hand side near Mo Salah. He is then going to switch the ball over to Luis Diaz to try and capitalise on the space that is left out by those Everton players. Remember, they want to stay compact, and in staying compact, it would make it easier for them to shuffle from left to right. They won't want to be too spread and that would allow Liverpool to go through the middle which means that they need to all go together as one but that means that the space is going to be free on these wide areas leaving Mo Salah and Luis Diaz to try and do their work. There will be a lack of overloads from Andy Robertson because of the defensive frailties that Liverpool have had recently. I don't see Trent Alexander-Arnold making too many runs either. I expect him to be very central making sure that he can play those passes even over the top towards Darwin Nunes We've already seen him play that pass in this season. But switches of play are going to be absolutely key, and the passes over the top are also something I think they could look towards. The positions taken up by Dominic Soberslai, as I've mentioned previously, and Harvey Elliott are going to be crucial in picking apart and trying to play through with the wingers of Liverpool. It's going to be a very, very difficult game for Everton, especially if Liverpool are on their game and they're at home with that advantage. I can see Liverpool getting at least a couple of goals, but that does not mean that Everton are going to be completely out of this game. Far from it. Although I do not believe that they're going to maintain possession, I do think on a transitional basis they will have something to offer themselves. This is what I expect from Everton. Very compact, but at the same time being able to transition and bounce away to capitalise on Liverpool's frailties that I mentioned earlier. Andy Robertson is not necessarily going to be covered by the likes of Luis Diaz or by the likes of Harvey Elliott. Neither is Ibrahim Kanate. With the leaving of Trent Alexander-Arnold, I expect Canate to be worked that little bit more. Watch for Dwight McNeil to really change from his more defensive mindset and really try to find these channels. The same can be said for Jack Harrison. As I mentioned previously, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is going to try and pin himself to either Alexis McAllister or Trent Alexander-Arnold. If he's able to win these physical duels, knockdowns will be given to either Decore or James Garner. Then you've got the counter-attacking ability. Then you've got the running power. Everton are a very physical present team they're very good at running with the ball they're very good at at muscling opponents it's going to be this drive and grit and determination that's going to be trying to power their way through the heart of this liverpool back line and then you're going to be looking at the channels. Then you're going to be looking at trying to make the most of the switches of play that Everton are going to be able to try and commit. The long balls are going to be absolutely key and the physical duels are going to be something that Everton are going to look to really capitalise upon when they get the opportunities. And then it's all about taking their chances. I expect Everton to get at least a couple of chances in this game. Liverpool tend to give up quite a bit even when they are in a lot of possession. But I expect Liverpool to dominate the game. Everton to try and capitalise on moments, but because they're at Anfield and because of the sheer pressure and presence of this Liverpool attack, I expect them to come out on top. Overall, I expect the game to be around about a 3-1 win to Liverpool. That's down to home advantage, the quality of the players and the fact that Liverpool's strike force is just that bit too hot to handle. However, Everton will get their chance and it depends on whether they can take those moments as to how close the game will be. I believe it's three goals to one, but my question to you is, how do you see the game playing out? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you on the next one. But until then, take care.